Okay, so we're back for part two. Gonna do the centers. Um, I realized there's another reason that I do my videos kind of late, besides the fact that I just am a night worker more in general. But it's because uh, about two feet away from me is a very cute little Chihuahua rat terrier mix who really likes barking at the mailman. He's living the stereotype. And so um, if you hear crazy barking, because it might be mail time soon, sheesh, I don't know what to say. You'll hear how loud it gets. But um, <laughs> so let's hope that doesn't happen. Probably will, though. So today we're going to do our centers here, and including the uh, kind of the puffy stuff on the outside. Now, there's a wide variety of sizes of centers for poppies. Um, and then this little bulb thing, you know, that's, and not every poppy has a little bulb thing. For example, we have our California poppy that has more of a stalk looking thing like that. Right. Um, so, you know, but we're doing the common poppy, the oriental poppy, sometimes like looks kind of like a corn poppy, I think, um, doing that bright red, which we'll call the Nana poppy. If you saw part one, anyhow, so you can kind of choose your own size to go if you want it bigger. I normally actually go a little bit bigger, but I kind of like this little button one because a lot of ones I was looking at had this little button, like a little, this teeny little button. They all look like buttons, but that's a small one. And then I just fill it out with a lot of the um, fringe. Now, I never remember is the fringe, again, the one bead at the end of a twist, or is it a bunch of beads and whatever it is. This is the one bead at the end of a long twist. Um, so we fill it out, and, and you can do more with that. We'll talk about that when we get to it. So there's actually quite a few I made to try to get to that exact size. Now we're going to do, this is where we get to the intermediate or advanced situation. Um, and again, I don't know what the technical guidelines, if there are any guidelines for when you call one thing, the other or whatever. Um, for me, it's just the level of pain in the neckedness. Is that a word? Pain in the neckness? Um, that they have. Now this is the more pain in the neck one, but I like it because it does give those little like kind of this little radii coming out there, kind of like one of those um, center pods. And so you kind of get that in there. And that's by doing an inverted. Now this, I don't, I know this kind of technique. I, okay, I don't know that. I'm, I'm, I kind of think this kind of technique is called a basket weave. I'm pretty darn sure. But, um, and this is kind of, I've, I inverted it to show the seams. So I don't know if that's something that happens normally or not, but that's, I, I've never seen it, but I like it because it gives you this little seam action. So I did a few of those before I got to this size that I liked. I did, um, I even did one that was in this sort of color that I liked that we're going to use in a second, which is what that one is, which is this, this Toho Hybrid Frosted Jet Picasso Opaque Y302F. And I like it, we can't really, probably won't be able to see on the camera, but basically... It has that sort of Picasso finish, and in this case, it's pretty subtle. It's just sort of like a white wash, kind of a random white wash over the frosted black beads. Um, it's kind of a hard to find one, but I only ever use it for things like this. So this this one has lasted me a very long time, years, though I'm kind of getting nervous about it. I'm going to go get another one. Um, and this way, I did it with this pearl silver wire, which is like a matte silver wire. And that way, you can really see the seams here, right? Um and then I did one in the same colors as that, but it just came out too big. And it's not too big. If you like it, I'll give you all the different, you know, it's kind of hard to imagine it in there. See, because I, what I do is I take one of my petals, you know, and I kind of, and that's hard to envision it exactly too. Kind of hold it there. And I was like, mm, that looks a little bit too big for the fringe. It's, it's not. I mean, I like, I normally go bigger because I like those little button middles. But I, I guess I wanted to highlight the fringe a little bit more. So I did a few of those. Um, and then I even did one, you know, I'm changing like I did one with the dark with the smoky topaz a b translucent matte one with the olive lines through it and a little more squared off so you can shape these so you'll see why I consider these to be advanced because you'll watch me do them and go how the heck is she making a video she looks like she's you know trying to I don't know straighten out a bunch of cobwebs um but they kind of straighten themselves out. So you got to have a little patience with them. So we'll do those second. And so these, and again, look at the bunch of, I'm trying, right? And then the one that we're going to do today, though, the more intermediate one is just the straight up beehive. And I actually do a conventional sort of beehive um, shape to it. It's rounded. You can make them more square. You can make them bigger. They kind of look like gumdrops from the old days. And I made a bunch of different sizes before I got to the one that I liked. I like, and then this one, by the way, actually, this is a basket weave with, because I was trying to show 
what it looks like when you do the exposed seams versus the more conventional way where you're hiding the seams a lot of the time. And you can see the difference. Um, and in this case, and it, this is really handy for certain things, but you know, if you're going for that drama of the seams, this is probably more of a pain in the neck than it's worth. If you don't want the seams, you might as well just do the beehive, which is a lot faster. Um, but it kind of is cool and you can shape it and make it like into a gumdrop size again and beehive. So I did a bunch of beehives to get to the size I wanted. Now this one I think is the most similar to the little button I'd have. These were a little bit bigger and sometimes, you know, it depends completely on the rows behind them and how you shape them. Because this starts as a one bead, but then the row sizes are different. And we'll talk about row count when we do them specifically in a couple minutes, hopefully sooner. But then these are two bead ones. And again, you can see the difference in shape with those two. I always just love making these. I just make extra, right? Just because you're going to use them, right? I mean, they're kind of cool. I always just think, well, oh, they'd be kind of cool in their own little arrangement, right? Um, so then I was thinking, oh, wait, maybe I actually have some I already made. I could show them. And I looked in my bin of, you know, my bin and a half or so of non-used. I wouldn't say reject parts, but let's just say not used parts. Um, and I thought there'd just be a few in that whole thing. Look how many I made over time that I have forgotten about and not used. So these really, because I, I love making poppies so these were all for poppies and you know and some got a little squished over the time so don't think they're supposed to let. so all the kind of greenish and black ones were all for making poppies and you know and now i have them for other things these really would be a cool little bouquet all in and of themselves right all these different colors so i did like basket weaves with like a lighter pea green with a dark olive wasn't what i wanted for whatever and i was really into kind of making them hard edged at the time for whatever reason um this one i did it so that you can't see the seams as much but you still get the hint of them and that's a shinier pea green with uh i think that's a vintage bronze um did a black one with some, which is similar with a olive green and more trapezoidal there profile. I was really into the trapezoidal po profile for a while. No seam showing. This khaki one with no seam showing. That's kind of cool. It's like a translucent khaki, but you can kind of still get the hint of them. So that's that's kind of a cool one. These are for bigger poppies too. So um, and then this one, which is actually one of the beads I used in the fringe on the outside. So as you can see, you can and here's a beehive, right? This is more of the size we'll be using, though it's a two bead, but it goes down fast. So for whatever reason, so I just, you just make a bunch. If you make them wrong, then or not wrong, but if you make them and don't use them, then you have them for something else. You know, I forgot I had this many. I'm kind of stoked now. I'm like, oh, what can I make next with these, right? And so I even got like, you know, these kind of like, that was a big one. Um, and then this one, never used that, but it's kind of cool. A celery green color lined. Wow, that is old. I don't even think I have that wire anymore. Um, so anyhow, you get the gist. This is a really cool one. Um, that bead, probably hard to see. This is a black lined in in a frosted crystal bead, which is kind of fun. Now, uh, and another just little button one, standard. Now all of these, well, that one, also for Poppy. But anyhow, the point here is that you can keep them around. So just experiment. You know, these were all not for poppies. These were actually for when I was trying to do a Cosmos um, Cosmos uh, pattern. Um, I don't particularly even like Cosmos in particular, but there is when I was doing the Language of Flowers series and they mean something I can't remember right now. And so I was trying to make one and gosh, sometimes the simplest flowers take forever. I probably did like four different tries before I finally got one I liked. But I made these, I used the same kind of method here, which was the beehive, but... It's kind of, it's not really a beehive, but it's basically that idea and then bringing down a second level so it really does look like a little button. So you can kind of like flex this idea and make it all different kinds of ways, right? So these were all, I, this was a little modeled one for the middle of a, of a cosmos. This one also with a sort of celery green in the inside and a yellow color lined on the outside. Kind of a weird take on it. Um, then of course the basic, but obviously these are ones I did not use. But but these are similar techniques. So keep this in mind. It's good for making these sort of disc, very dramatic centers. And if anything, I should make a little bouquet just out of them. There Aren't they cute as they, I was going to say, aren't they cute as buttons? Um, I think I've used that word too much here. So <laughs> it would be kind of cool, huh? Maybe just one day I'm just going to make a little bouquet just out of them. They're kind of cute. 
not a bad idea. Anyhow, so that was all ones that I had made over the years that I hadn't used. So just save them, experiment, do your thing. Um, okay, so that's what we're going to make today. So we're going to start with the intermediate one now. Um, and so that one's going to be more of the, the, the beehive style. So we're actually going to replicate this one. So these are all where, where are my beehives at? Okay. So these are all beehives, all in that smoky topaz, AB, translucent, transparent bead, whatever you want to call it. Um, so I'm actually going to do it in a different, slightly more opaque, a brown AB um, frosted just for fun. What the heck? So we're going to do one of these and we're going to do, and you can choose to go bigger and I'll show you the different counts on these. And again, experiment. These are pretty easy to kind of do kind of quickly and they're good practice. So if you'd want to go slightly bigger, then do it. So here's what we got. Um, so far, what we're doing. Uh, oh, that's for the basket weave. So the beehives are basically by count, right? I don't know if you can see this here. But what we're going to be doing is the one that I like here is the 1, 3, 6, 9, 10, 10. Now, when I say that, and if I do pipe these, I have to kind of know, because I'm not a pattern writer, so you have to kind of bear with that. So that means one bead in the center, three, six, nine, ten, ten on each side. And that gives a sort of narrow one. Now the next bead, the next one up that was a one bead, which is slightly wider, was a one, three, seven, ten, eleven, eleven. So again, experiment. If you want to go smaller, then you know, it's all about the shape and the sides. Should we now I'm wondering, do I want that one that's slightly bigger? Maybe I do want to do that one slightly bigger. Or do I want this little button one? Now there's only a modicum of difference. So we will, I don't know. I'm going to go with the one up size. I'm going to do the one, three, seven, 10, 11, 11. And it's this one. Cause I do like it slightly bigger. It's going to be, let's, let's hold it. Now this isn't always a good gauge because it's hard to kind of visualize without the fringe around it. And of course, or without the other petals. But that actually looks like kind of a nice size, right? So again, you experiment, figure it out. Not everyone has to be exactly the same. So make one with one and then make one with another and see what you like. That definitely looks more similar to this one. And they, I like to actually have the centers be kind of different anyway. Oh, but we're not going to use it anyway. Let's just do the one three because I'm going to actually make it with the basket weave one. So let's try the one, three, six, nine, ten, ten, right? One, three, six, nine. Now for the larger ones... Um, I did a two bead basic and that these would be for the next step up size. And so again, those are, I did two, four, eight, 10, 10 or two, four, eight, 11, 11. And this one has an extra row on it, which I wrote as optional. So we're going to do the one, three, I don't know which one I just said to be quite honest. The one, three, seven, 10, 11, 11, one, three, seven, 10, 11, 11. Okay. Sounds good. Let's do it. So. These are just a variation on the basic frame situation. And so I'm going to be using, um, actually with this one, I'm going to be doing it in that, in this Picasso one here. So in this, the jet frosted jet Picasso Toho, let's let you go away. So I'm going to do these on a 26 gauge. Um, and so I string up about, I don't know. You're not going to need this much, but it's better safe than sorry. I, you definitely don't need that much. I'd say about 10 inches of beads. This is closer to 15, but you don't need that much. So about 10 inches of your beads, right? And so we're going to start like a regular basic frame. And so this is going to be the one. So I'm going to start. It's kind of weird to do a one, but there it is. And you want it because you're going to want these kind of long ends to come off of it so that you can strap it onto your, your stem wire. Um, give it a lot of, a lot of space, you know, maybe like five, at least four inches. Um, now I'm using for this, because it's a, this is sort of a frosted bead. I'm using this iron color 26 gauge. I love this iron one. Um, cause it's like a matte black. It's kind of cool. It's like a dusty matte black. So it matches those beads perfectly. So, um, I'm going to give it about five inches up here, five, four, five. And then you're going to make your loop so that when it's bent, it's about four or five inches or so. Now I got my hand position all weird for me. I'm like, oh wait, which way does my hand go? Um, sometimes you do it by like muscle memory. Sometimes you completely forget. And so you want to twist it down a nice ropey twist. And it is harder to do when these are longer, right? Um, 
you know, at least go down and make sure you're not messing up your top twist by holding it too light or too tight. Um, so go down, you know, maybe about an inch, a little bit over an inch. Okay. So there we go. Now, my hands are a little extra messed up today. I just realized, so definitely have patience with me. So I don't really like the way that top played out, but that's okay. See, it's a little bit wrinkly up there. My twist got a little sloppy up there. So we're going to straighten it out. I have my one little bead here. And remember what I said, one, three, seven, ten, eleven, eleven. So I take out three beads. I did never did this by count before. I would just do it on my fingertip and just make the shape. But um, it's your shapes can be completely controlled by what the number of your next beads are in your row. So um, I was like, I should count for them. So anyway, so when I'm going to do this now, I'm treating it like a regular basic frame. And I'm going to hold, see where these three beads are, and I'm going to kind of pinch them to give it a good roundness, a good round curve to that. And then I'm going to bring this over, and I, we want it to be real tight. So see how the three are right there, and I'm going jamming it right up on that one. You know, can't get a smaller basic frame than one bead, so it is kind of annoying. Um, so again, see how that that tightness there, right, that, that push I always show you guys, pushing real hard, pulling, pushing, and then twisting. Bring my thing over here, and then I kind of push down my fingernail. I did trim my nails, so um, I lost my furrow. <laughs> I was like, can I put it in artificially? But that just doesn't seem cool. So three on the other side. Now, I'm holding this to block it, but that's because I'm trying to keep things in place. Now, the, the, the numbers that I'm giving you will make you make that shape, the shape that we're trying to do, because that's the only way it's going to play out. Now, you're going to get this cute little flower-looking thing right there. Gonna pull it real tight. See, I let it slip. That can happen. You wanna use the bead against itself. Pull it real tight and then do that twist, real tight twist, right? And that's how I do them when I'm close like that. I actually twist my hands. Um, I don't twist around it. So now I have three on each side beads. So now my next step then is gonna be the seven. And I'm kind of pushing it out right now to kind of push that middle bead, keep it level. And so I'm going to count out seven. Now you can go the, the more domey one and do six next. And so count out seven. Now, this is where we want to kind of slightly bend down, slightly bending down our wires. Okay, because now we're going to start making that dome. And so what you can also do is kind of slightly push down. Again, you're bringing this down under here. But it's going to have to make this shape, so don't worry about it. It doesn't have anywhere to go because it doesn't have enough beads to go flat. It's going to have to go either above or below. So we're just making it go below because we're making that dome. Now, again, you turn this down. Okay, and I'm making it look more complicated than it is right now. I just go. It'll make that shape. And you, we're going to fix it afterwards, too. Look at me getting all tangled because I'm trying to, like, I can show it off doing my thing fast. Let's cut that little knot off. I'm not going to, I could try to untwist it, but I'm not going to. It's just getting in my way right now. Go away, mister. Go away. Okay. So my dog thought I was talking to him. <laughs> I wouldn't say that. Okay. Now that gives me a little less to hold on to though. Probably shouldn't have done that. Okay. So I'm pulling that seven, twist and tight, bringing it around. And then kind of every time I do the twist, notice how I kind of push that down so that the next row is going to get flush in there. And don't worry so much about what's happening because it will make the shape you need it to make. So seven. Go again, kind of going underneath the original disc there and bringing it around. And then getting as tight as you can in there, as tight as you can. Use the beads off each other. Make sure that bead is just jammed right onto that wire that you're spinning around. Spin it around, push it down a little bit so that it's right next to the, ready to go for the next row. Okay, so now we're going to do 10. That was 11. Okay, now, again, pushing down, pushing down, just keep them down. Has nowhere to go because it can't go, like I said, it can't really go flush. That last row kind of can, but this one won't be able to. Now it's going to definitely have to go above or below. And don't worry about how it looks while you're doing it. You can definitely kind of fix up the shaping later. And I'll show you that in a second. One, two. And now I'm wishing I had done the one, three, six, nine, nine. But maybe we'll do one of those next and see what we think about the difference. Okay, so then this is the 10. Okay, so we do a 10. 
And again, just make sure you're getting that last bead right there. That last bead is, is getting pushed up against this one and then against the wire there, twisting it around, pushing that down so it's ready to go. Okay. Now this one's definitely, these are different beads than they use. It also, I should say that really depends on your beads. So um, be careful with that because these counts are just suggestions. So now I'm doing 11. And I can already see this one's getting pretty gumdrop shaped, like a bigger gumdrop. Um, I guess they're all gumdrop shaped. So trying so hard to keep it on screen. I think I did, well, cross fingers. I did okay in the first part. So then 11. Bringing that around again, and so you can already see we're getting that, that shape, that domey gumdrop shape. Okay, twist it around. Does anyone even eat gumdrops anymore? It's such a, like an old-fashioned candy, huh? If I probably asked like a 15-year-old, what's a gumdrop? They'd probably be like, I have no clue what you're talking about. Okay, so then one last pass at 11. Now, if you want it to be bigger or steeper, you just keep going. Okay, so I'm doing two rows of 11, which will kind of make it sort of level off in shape. And then there's another 11. And so I probably only used about, I don't know, six inches of beads. So you really don't need that many. Oh, see, I, I'm so used to doing it without counting. So I just start shaping it. I just do the shape as I go. So there's another 11. And I kind of use my fingertip. See, I'm using my fingertip underneath here to kind of keep it rounded on the outside. But you can adjust that later. So pushing it right up on the edge there and spinning it around. And now that we're at the last spin, you can just keep going. Just spin it all the way around this weird one sticking out. Get it nice solidly in there. Now it's a little bit wonky, look at that. That's okay, we're gonna shape it later. In fact, I'm not even gonna worry about it until I fix my wires. But I mean, you can, especially with the 26, you can really give it a good, look, it's already looking better, look at that. So don't worry about your shape as you go because these numbers are going to give you the shape you need. You know, or at least the possibility of the shape you need. So now I can see that the inside has a little bit of a divot. So I'm going to take, um, I don't know, the end of a paintbrush because it's nice and rounded and wooden in there and just shape it from the inside, you know, pushing it out, whatever you got, a chopstick, something like that. Be careful. Don't use something that's pointy, obviously, and don't point yourself. So this is perfect. Um, so I can shape it from the inside and push that top out and get that nice little dome on it. So just use what you got around. Bottom of a paintbrush really works well. Um, and you can use it to pull things out on this side. Now it's gonna change shape. I don't know why I'm even bothering doing this now because it's gonna change shape when I chop off. Um, so I'm gonna chop this one off so I only have two wires. Save some wire. Um, and I do keep two wires with this. I don't know if you should or not, but I do keep two wires on that side. Um, I just have this sturdiness paranoia. Now, where did my needle nose go? I think what I use the most are my serrated needle nose. These are the best. Um, so I'm going to bend them down to get like a little hard bend. Let's get this out of the way. Especially this one, actually more is about this one, the, the thicker braided one. Because I want that to be bended down, bent down, <laughs> bended down. <laughs> I know how to conjugate verbs. Okay, and then I'm gonna kind of hold my finger up like that so I kind of make that sharp bend. So that, see, it has a sharp bend. And that's the one that's gonna go in the middle. And then this one's obviously easy enough to do, so you don't really care. You can just do that with your fingernail because we're gonna wrap them around. And this is the thing that you'll actually attach to the stem wire. And this is the first one thing that you will attach. And it's gonna have the same attachment as the basket weave one. So whether we use this one or the basket weave is... And I use them both. It's not about it being intermediate. Sometimes I just like, I'll try to find some pictures. Um, now, again, you can look down and go, hmm, it looks a little bit, you need to smush that way. Don't over smush because, well, actually, if you over smush, you bring in your paintbrush and you start doing your thing. So there we go. It looks pretty nice and it's going to look perfect on. So now that's the slightly larger one. Let's really quickly. And then, so if, I just want to show you really quickly with, um, you don't even need to make an end knot if you don't want to. You can just keep one bead off and do the same thing. And so I'm going to show you without much talking. <laughs> I always say that. <laughs> and I'm yapping away. Um, like how quickly you can make these. So that you're not scared of like experimenting and it going wrong. You know, probably the most annoying thing is this twist part right now. 
as opposed to the basket weave, which will have many annoying moments. Um, but I do like those exposed radii, for lack of a better word right now. Um, okay, so that's a much better twist than the last time. So sometimes I'll just do it like that so I don't have a knot, and then I just pick up my bead later and just do it after the fact like that. Okay, so this one we're going to do a 1, 3, 6, 9, 10, 10. And um, again, it's the same method, so maybe I won't even finish it. But I just wanted to show you, like, the difference. So again, you're going to start the same, but this one's just going to be tighter because the rows are going to be less beads. So you start your three, you mash your it around there, get it twisted. There you go. Get your other three. Off we go. I, always holding, push. I didn't push it down that time, and I could see the difference. Push that little, push it down from the top. Try to keep that kind of straight. Just kind of play with your, so then we get the little flower looking thing. Twist. Bring it around, do a little nail push down so it's ready to go. Now we're doing a six. And so push your, this is going to make you have to pull down a little bit. So it's already kind of doming where the other one was kind of flat for the first two um, circles out. So twist it around. And again, don't worry too much about shape. It's good to keep track of it as you go, but just don't worry about it because you can fix it at the end. So there's a six. So see how fast we can get these going, right? And I'm not, I'm not fast. I know some, there's some people on the Facebook group that are always like, I did, you know, five flowers yesterday. I'm like, holy cow, I did a five petals yesterday, maybe. Um, so that's a six. I don't even know how that's possible. But um, it, it must be. I don't know. It reminds me of like the bionic woman when the beginning of the show that now I'm really aging myself, but the, the beginning of the show, they would show her cause she was a teacher and they would show her turn around the chalkboard and then she would like write in bionic speed and like then turn the chalkboard around a minute later and be all full of stuff like writing. <laughs> yeah. It's like magic. Anyhow, does anyone remember the bionic woman? So wait, so we're doing three, six, nine, 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 ten, ten. Sorry. So I'm doing another nine. And again, I'm kind of keeping it on the, notice how it's already kind of bowed out. And I'm kind of keeping it on the tip of my finger, kind of keeps it rounded. Doing my spin. And then pushing, always when I finish my spin, I push that down so it's ready to receive for the next row. And now we just do some tens. Two, two circles of ten. Two around the way, two rounds of ten. So ten, this one's going to give a kind of a pointier gumdrop. Okay, push again that way. And now you can see kind of how fast these can go. It looks like it's almost, yep, it's 10. I was gonna say it looks like almost 10 right there. Okay. Kind of play games when I'm beading where I try to like estimate exactly how many beads I'm gonna need. Like when you're a kid and you used to have to guess how many M&Ms were in the jar. Sometimes they get pretty close and that's kind of fun. Um, okay, so there is Another row of 10, all the way around, 10 beads each, turning, pushing, and then, so I'm sorry, let me get back on the screen here, and then 10, and again, trying to keep in track your, but the thing is, with these bead counts, it has to pull down, because they can't be right next to it, and so we just finished one, see, that's not bad, so I did my last row of 10, so I'm going to spin these around. Get it kind of, you know, you can, however you're comfortable with spinning the wires together. And I'll cut this one, and then I'll just cut this one completely off. And then there we go. We have a little beehive. Now this is a smaller one, just based on the choices that we made. So it starts off the same size. Where'd we go? But, and I haven't shaped it yet, but you can see that the width is different, right? And I'm going to shape it a little bit. Um, and get out my, this one actually, because it's so tight, the rows are smaller, kind of shapes itself almost. So I'm using this on the inside to sort of just make sure everything's sort of round, pushing it out against the edge uniformly, getting the top kind of nice and domey. Another one, I said ovally, now I'm saying domey. I don't know. I should just say dome-like, oval-like. Okay, now I'm going to bend that up. See, 
I really just care about that one with the pliers. This one, again, you can just do so just one layer. So just end up wrapping it around. And this one you can, you don't need to rope wrap it. You can just wrap the one strand around the others and bring it together. And in fact, I suggest that. And then, then we are ready to roll. And look down from the top, make sure it looks fairly uniform. Looking good. And so again, a little wonky on that side, push it down. There you go. Don't overwork it too much. But when you attach that, so now there we go. That's a nice little beehive. So there's your options, right? And that still starts out with a one bead. It just all depends on your next choices. And you're probably like, what is she talking about? They look exactly the same. I don't think they do though. Do they? Um, that one definitely looks narrower. So there's your options, whichever one you want to use, uh, whichever one you aesthetically like. I could go with either one of these for the size poppy, right? Either one of these would be good. So if aesthetically you like the slightly bigger one or the slightly smaller one, or you don't care, then just flip a coin. Um, if you don't care, I think the smaller one is actually kind of easier to make because it does sort of shape itself. So and then here's more of them in those size. That's the one bead. This is this one in the one bead style. Now, again, it's going to depend on your, because these are bead counts. So, of course, it matters what your beads are. So, and then this is the one I made with the other bead in this count. So, you get the idea. So, that's the more, that's an intermediate one. But I, I almost would say it's borderline beginnery. Again, I don't know how you judge these, but it's certainly no basket weave scenario. Let's get to the basket weave, the the dreaded basket weave. Okay, so now with the basket weave, uh, where are we at? Where'd we go? Um, that's the one that I actually put in here. So um, is um, the other thing about the basket weave is, is don't get too worried about it because the fringe is going to be all around it. So that's going to, you know, what you really care about is the look down. So, you know, okay, here's how we make it. Here's how I make it. I don't know how we make it, to be quite honest. It's probably an easier way out there. But what I do is a, um, like a six spoke with 26 gauge. And then we're going to do a 28 gauge sort of basket weave around it. So let's start with the six. Where's my 26? Where's my 26? Where'd you go, mister? There you are. So this this reel is way... We're going to do um, we're gonna do kind of a similar one. Actually, we're not going to do it in black. We're going to do it in this, um, this opaque brown AB finish, matte AB finish one, because I just want something different. So I cut about, I don't know, about 12 inches. It doesn't really matter. Um, I cut three 12-inch ones, you know, about 12 inches. Uh... And then, because whatever you cut, then just cut the same amount and get three of those. Get three of those going. I know it looks like a big slobby mess there. The end of a reel is really a pain in the neck sometimes if you're not being careful. And I'm not being careful. Okay, so I did three, uh, probably 14 inch, 12 inch or so, whatever, 13 inch. And then it's just easier to do it that way for me. And then you can just fold it there and then twist it that way. But I, I find that harder to do. So I cut them through here. So now I have six of them. Because I find it easier for me to twist if they're all six freestanding as opposed to folding it and then twisting it. So now I'm horrible at twisting these. So that's like one of the worst grip things to do for my hands. So I find that the best way to do it is to kind of really hold it with my fingernail and kind of make it into a handle. Now you can twist it however you want to. And then also using my fingernail up here and making it into handle and like turning that handle. Um, because I really, really have, this is one of the worst motions for me in terms of being able to do it. I'm not very good at it. So I don't only really care about the twist up at the way top there. And you can turn the handle over here, but we want a tight twist up at the very top at least. I don't really care about the bottom at all. So get a good half inch of tight twist on it. Okay. And now, at this point, these are going to be my spokes. So I'm going to flate. Now, again, uh, if you don't want to do this way, fast forward to the fringe. 
But it's a good thing to practice. It's a good skill to have on hand. I mean, because you can use it for other things in other ways. The spoke method, like making lily pads, for example, or morning glories. Look, oh, speaking of, I just had some morning glories that I found when I was looking that I forgot I had done that I found when I was looking for the... Um, the other basket leaves and so these morning glories are done with spokes and these are a good example too of painting this one was completely like this was this was what it looked like this is the raw form it's an opal um supposedly vintage an opal gold lined bead um with some semi-matte uh light yellow color lined in the middle there and then i don't know i made these a long time and then this is with it painted with the alcohol ink. And I am going to, there's no painting on this particular flower that we're doing the poppy. Though I might try that little black spot. I've never done that before on a color lined bead. Might experiment with that. Um, anyhow, but this shows you how nice you can get this sort of really like kind of almost airbrush looking thing. And you can actually airbrush with these. I have not tried that yet. I got an airbrusher, but I'm kind of scared of it. So this is just with a paintbrush and, and using different like gradations and actually three different blues and a little bit of yellow right in the middle there to kind of deepen the color. But this one looked exactly like this one. So this is your little teaser on painting beads, which I might throw a couple in there as we go, just because that will be next will be a painting one. So you can kind of see what you can do with them because that's a pretty cool looking morning glory. I don't know why it's just sitting there in the bin. Um, anyhow. So, and that's what it, this looked exactly like that before the paint. Anyhow, um, and I forgot I even made them. <laughs> okay, next, uh, back to the matter hand. So the spoke thing you can use for morning glories like that. Morning glories are pentameral symmetry, which means five spokes in general. Um, so, hang on one second while I figure this out. Hang on, I'm going to cut. For just a second because I think someone is coming to the door okay back to the matter at hand here so we're doing a bunch of spokes with this and we're doing six spokes for whatever reason that's why I guess you do more or less though I don't know why you'd want to so they're never gonna this is where it again why would I call it advanced because it's a pain in the neck that's why I call it advanced um, but I do like the effect or else I wouldn't bother um, so you want to kind of keep a tight little, but it's never going to look like you want it to look. It's always going to look like one is kind of flopping down more and whatever. And also don't worry about too much about it being evenly spaced because you're going to make that happen by the beads are going to make that happen. So I'm making like a little spoky thing, right? It's like one of those things that people use for those like head massagers, right? Ding, 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 ding. Um, so it's a little bit, and look at all the possibilities you could make with this. Anyhow, so. Moving on. And so this is 26 gauge olive wire. And I'm going to use, and here because of the basket weave, the, wire, the way the wire is done, the wire is just as much of a character in this play. I mean, normally it's always a supporting character, but here it's, it comes into stardom role at least or close to it. So this one, um, this one in particular is the high contrast. I'm not doing as high of a contrast, right? With this, I'm doing um, an olive with a darker color. It's not going to be quite that dark, but like that. It's a little more subtle, but I like it. Now, anyhow, so uh, it's, like I said, I'm using this brown, um, what is this one? Uh, Toho Brown Matte Opaque Rainbow 406F, um, which I've, I don't think I've ever made one with it. And so it's loaded onto, oh, that's the wrong one. It's loaded onto, I was about to do it with that same iron one, a 28 gauge of um, olive, an old olive one. Uh, so doing 28 gauge. So we're going to take out, you know, I can unwrap it. Um, so this is 28 gauge. This is 26 gauge. The frame is 26. The wrapping wire is 28. So I find it now again, it's about how your hands work. So I hold about, I don't know, you know, it doesn't matter. Some two inches or so I'm holding it and I'm going to wrap. I wrap away from me going up and away, up and away just a few times. Well, more than a few times and get a real tight wrap right at the top because that's what's going to really make the spokes work. Okay. So i got a little tight wrap on that. You're not going to see it, so it doesn't matter. Um, and then that's like your handle. Now, here's how we make it. Here's the difference. Well, first of all, if you want to expose, 
what you're going to do is you're going to do an under and then over and then under wrap. And you always want to start with the wrap just to kind of secure things. And then we're going to do a one bead. Like, and I just add a bead every time though. That doesn't always, sometimes you have to, I just like it to be uniform, but sometimes it, yeah, you got to really be careful with that. So one bead and then I'm going under the spoke coming back over and I'm, now this is where it's going to get messy. I've told you this isn't going to be pretty. And I'm kind of pushing that, jamming it, getting that, holding it with that finger. See, I was getting like pressed, white pressure there. I'm really getting that in that notch there. And then over and then back under. Now, if you don't want to expose it, then you'd go over and come under and back up. We're going under, coming over, and then back under. And that's going to expose the seam for us. Um, oh, God. I would sh show you this is going to, you're going to see what I'm talking about. But you see how they end up, right? And they all look like this in the beginning. Um, so I'm making sure that they really take some comfortable, like you got it. They are not, they're not going to be comfortable. So I'm going to go under, right? And I'm holding it right there with my finger. And I'm holding it right in that little notch because these, oh, I'm guaranteeing you, these are going to be annoying. Which again, fast forward and get onto the fringe if you don't even want to bother. But they're fun little things to practice. And I do like the exposed seam part. I'm really trying to get the, the first row is, the first like wrap around is by far, uh-oh. See, look, I already missed a, that has never happened. It's because I'm yapping away. I missed a spoke or I moved it one or the other. My twisted one under there. You were supposed to be here, mister. See, but then you just go back. What's no big whoop? I was yapping about doing it. I didn't put the feet down. <laughs> That's funny. Um, See, you can do them a, a kajillion times and still. So there you go. But just keep track. I've never done that before, though. Um, I did the lacing without putting the actual bead down. Like I did the wraparounds. Okay, there we go back on the saddle again an easy fix because i'm keeping some attention on it at least now pushing that one in and it's kind of pre-kinked because i already uh, sigh okay so i get my thumb out of the way sorry these like you have to keep so much track of these now bringing it around trying to keep that inner now I am, if you are frustrated with this your first time around and you even get it close to what I, the mess I'm showing you right now, then you're doing good because trust me, these take some practice. Um, and I clearly had some practice as you've seen from my pile of misfit parts. Um, and still, uh, no. Okay. So I'm getting that one in there. I'm making sure it's really jammed down into the center. See, I'm pushing it into that center, using the beads against itself and the wire, okay, twisting it right around that bottom, right? And don't worry, again, if it's a little bit wonky in the beginning. Okay. <laughs> You're like, what is she showing us? I told you, it looks like I wasn't using that example, that analogy for no reason. It looks like I'm untangling a cobweb. Imagine doing that. How much fun would that be? Okay, so I already got four beads. So you know you only have to do six. So at least we know we're getting down to the end. Okay, so I'm going to push my bean. I know. What are you watching? Plate full of spaghetti. Um, okay, so I'm holding that there. And I'm just making sure. It really, I mean, it's not less annoying, but it is somewhat easier once you get past the setup row. Now, again, I'm twisting it around. Give it a try. If you get frustrated, then fine. You know, you're adding a skill thing here and it'll be handy. See, that's not even as tight as I'd want it, but that's okay because later on I can push it down. And let me get my last one for my first row, my first pass. And again, I'm going under and I'm coming up over. It's kind of like you're just, you're, well, you're weaving, like basket weaving. And then I'm twisting it. I do it like as a twist. You can do it as a wrap around, however your hand wants to work. And then you get your spokes out. Okay. So now I have one. And look, at it does not look pretty, but it will be fine. <laughs> I'm trying to make it pretty in the meantime. Don't try to make it pretty in the meantime. Look what happens. Okay. I have to hold it. Sorry. Down like that. Now, 
we're gonna we're aiming for kind of like an umbrella effect right I did used to like to go out like as a flat disc and then make a like a profile of a trapezoid but eh, I'm not really as into that now I'm gonna clip these off so these beads stay a little closer to me okay so now I'm gonna do a two all the way around now at this point like I said we're kind of going for a bit of an umbrella idea so you can start kind of doming things down though really you're gonna do that in the third pass around like like kind of pushing down your spokes a little bit so I'm gonna go again under see I'm holding these in place with my finger underneath and then I'm gonna get right up on this one I want it to be tight and if it doesn't look tight then bow it down more because then it will get tight that means you're doing it too flat if you have space if you have space on your wrapping wire okay bringing it around and there will be sometimes space because sometimes it wants more beads but and this one I don't get away I'm trying to get in the middle of the action there you go back you go okay so now we're going to do a two so this is again we're pushing this down we're pushing that down we're going under holding it with our finger here and then doing a tight tight twist don't worry about the overall shape worry more about whether or not like make sure that there's no space on your wrapping wire because there will start to be and that just means you need to bow it down more to get the wires closer to each other the spokes spoke wires like spokes on a wheel okay let's get two more and under now this see what now it's starting to rebel it's starting to say like we want more it should be wider you should put a three here i'm not going to put a three there I used to kind of alternate when I'm doing flat discs, but now I'm going to bow it down and make the wire come to the beads instead of adding an extra bead. So see, right now you can see there's no space. I'm pulling, and I'm able to do that because I'm actually pulling the wire. I have bad wrists, sorry. So I'm actually pulling the wire down. Okay, so I'm going to wrap this one around. Oops, I let go. How'd that happen? Let's try it again. Wrap this one around. See, little mistakes. Let's keep it real tight. There we go. I'm using my other finger. See how... There we go. Wrap. Do like two 180s, and that brings my wrapping wire back to the edge here. Okay. Let's go a little bit faster, because otherwise your eyes are going to start glazing over. Okay. So we're going under the next spoke wire. Pulling it real tight. Pull this one down, and that one down if we need to. Bring the wire to the, the spoke wires to the bead. Don't add extra beads. Because then it just bows down like, like I said, like an umbrella shape. Oh, shoot. I got to bring it over here. Okay. Push that back up so it's ready to go. And sorry, we're getting a lot of sound over there. Because Okay. I get two out again. Just pay attention to when you're done with your two row. I have two more twos to do. This one and one more. Okay. Under my spoke wire. Pulling it however your hands make it work. Pulling it real close, getting it right up on that spoke wire, twisting the two around. And then my spoke wire sticks back out. Um, and two more. Under. And now just push it in there. And, these will definitely not look very pretty until the end. So now this one, I can see that it really wants, it wants to have space between. It's really wanting like an extra bead there. But I'm not going to give it an extra bead there. I'm going to kind of bow these down again, like an umbrella. So I'm kind of see that already. I'm kind of arching it down and I'm going to bring the wire to the edge of the bead instead of adding an extra bead. Now, if I were trying to do a flat disc top, Okay, there we go. So now I have completed my two rotation. So now I gotta, I actually didn't write it down. Dang, I gotta actually look at it. What did I do? I did a two, a three, and then I went down with threes. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, so I did one, two, three, three, three in terms of what goes in between the spokes. So obviously once I start doing the three, three, threes, we're just going straight down pretty much. So the first three will still be kind of going out, not just straight down. So I take a three 
and I'm going to start right here. And I come to this one, and I'm still going under, under the spoke wire. Sorry, I shouldn't have my, it's just hard to, under the spoke wire, and then twist. Twist. And now, however you can do it, you can do a wrap around too. Just wrap it around. It's just harder for me to do it that way. Okay, and you start to get a little bit faster at it, I hope. So, again, just kind of keeping. And remember, it's, it is going to look... Uh oh, we lost some lighting. I hope it's still visible. Dang it. Um, well, there it is. Weird. I don't wonder why it turned off. Um, let's check really fast. Aha! Oh, really hot. Maybe we'll just leave it off. That's scary. Okay, so three. Hopefully you guys can still see... Yeah, I think you can. Okay, so doing a three, right? Just again, just fast wrap. It does get a little bit easier on this three. And then, so we do another three. And then we're going under. The next one, though, we're going to have to kind of, so we wrap around. And we're going to do this six times because there's six spokes. And then you do another three. I'll take my thumb off that. I'm worried now that you can see it, but I hope so. Dang. Okay. And then I do another three. You can already see that this is what's going on here. Go under. Bend that spoke down. Get out of my way. Now, these are pretty easy, this row, because it, it wants you to do three here, so it's letting you fit them in nicely. The next one, because it's going to be the same size, you're going to have to really bend down. So we have two more threes to go. So here I can see that there's a two there. And then here's a three, which means that... I have to fill in to do that rotation. One more three. Right? And then another one. Okay. So now we've done our threes. And we're going to kind of bow these down a little bit more. We want really want to have that sort of I, I, again, before I would like that sharp edge for whatever reason aesthetically. Now I want it to be, and if you like it, you can keep it. But I'm going to kind of make it now it looks like a little mushroom. Um, but you're kind of bowing it down. And again, you can come in later and shape these. Once you have it kind of hardwired. <laughs> I don't even know if that's technically a pun because that is literally what I'm doing. Um, then you can shape them later and figure things out. So let me get a little more up here. Put that off so it stays with me. There we go. Okay, so now we're doing another three. So now we're going to really need to pull our spokes down because otherwise it's just not going to work because it wants to spread out. So why would it want the same number of beads? It, that wouldn't be possible. So the only way we're going to make that work is to make it the same distance between the spokes. So I'm going to take three out here. Now, I did a four out one and then went down from a four, but that made it really wide. So this is the shape I wanted. So I'm doing a three. Now, again, I'm bringing, bringing the wires to meet each other, the spoke wires, so that, they, so that the three fits right in between them. You get a little bit extra space on the sides. It doesn't matter. That's what I was talking about in the beginning. I was saying, like, you know, the fringe is going to cover the sides, so don't get too uptight about them. Um, you just want that shape to be held up. So now here's another three going under. And this is, like I said, you know, it's they get to be a tangly looking mess. No lie. So I'm pushing that one down, pushing this one down to come meet it so that you can kind of see. I know it's kind of hard. I should have done higher contrast wires. I'm sorry. Um, again, not a pro at videos. Um, if you saw this setup, you'd laugh. You'd be like, yeah, you are not a pro. Um I still need to get a better tripod. Okay. I need to get a tripod. I broke mine, so it's not even on. I, if you saw what this is on, you'd laugh. Um, I know I keep saying that, but it's really funny. Um, okay. So again, I'm kind of bending these wires down so that it can take the three without too much space on them. And I know this is a real hard one to watch. This is, again, why I leave... 
See, I twisted that too far. Let's bring this back. Let's do another three. And it gets a little tangly, so you kind of have to kind of keep track of it really is like weaving a basket. Like you really have to kind of keep track of what your frame wires are, which I'm calling spoke wires here. So you want to go under, bring them down, push it down to meet it. Sorry, so it's hard to do this on, it's hard enough to do it, period. Twist it around and then do another three. Under your next wire, pushing it down, pushing everything down so that trying to keep. And now it starts to get, because I'm holding the way I'm holding it, I'm really like condensing my wires are getting really smushed down. It's okay, just be careful what you're grabbing. And again, this is not an arthritis friendly maneuver making these things. So mine are going to just look like this. I mean, my maneuvers. Okay, so that's a three. So now I've gone all the way around with one underpass. Um, and if you're making like a Cosmos or just wanting a button, then one underpass would be good. I want some height to it, so I'm going to do one more. I mean, by underpass, I don't know. I just made up that word. I mean, like the rows that are under the, like kind of the top sort of disc up there. So now I'm going to do one more pass through at three. And I'm just keeping track. I know I have to do because I have two rows of three right there. Two rows of three. So I want three rows of three. So again, I'm pull, making sure it's just like basket weaving. Pulling now, if, again, if this is already frustrating, you're just watching it, I still think you should give it a try. It's a cool effect. But, you know, the good thing to know is that you got the handy dandy beehive, which always does the job and is fast to do. So we're bending our wires down. And twisting. Okay, take three more out. We only have five more to do. Bending our wires down. Bringing it under our spoke wire. Pushing it up on the spoke wire. Right now it wants... Okay, push those wires together. Do a twist. Sorry, I'm getting out of frame. This is so hard to do for me, at least holding-wise, that even... Um, that doing it on the screen is just wackadoodle. Um, so much adventure. Okay, bending it down again, bringing that wire to meet it, and twisting around. Okay, let's see, we got that going on. And as you can see right now, it ain't pretty. Look at that thing. Well, it's not that bad, but it needs some shaping. It needs some TLC, which we will give it after we get the work done. So don't worry about like it looking super fancy as you go. Just make sure again that you're bending the spoke wires so that when you have the three on there, they're you're bending them to meet the edges of the three. So that way you're gonna get that dome shape. So I only have two more to do. How do I know there's only two more? Because again, I'm counting. Here I have two rows of three, two rows of three, three rows of three. That means that one's done. So I only have two more to do. So that's how I'm keeping track. And you got to kind of keep holding it like this too. That's why it's kind of hard to do a video of it. Push that flush up there. Get these so that the you bend the spoke wires to meet the beads. Do not be tempted to fill it up with other beads. That will change the overall shape. It's not horrible. You'll just get a different shape and you can probably still be fine with it. Just not what we're going for right here. Okay, that's the la double check. That's the last one. That is because now I'm going to twist it off. I mean, I'm going to just totally make sure it is done. You have done the hard part of your basket weave. And I am not going to do a second one of this to show you the difference because nobody wants to see that. Okay. Now this one, again, I want a sharp bend. and All the spokes are single wires. This is double, so I am going to use my pliers to kind of bend it into the middle to get a sharp bend on it. The other ones you can kind of just push in with your fingernail because they're just one bend. So kind of fold in. Fold, fold. Now you can obviously see it's misshapen right now. That's okay. It's not even... In fact, I actually kind of think that 
that profile is cool. So you could almost leave it like that if you wanted to. Um, now, this is a very wide one. So I'm going to get another less wide paintbrush um, using the ends. This paintbrush might be too narrow. And so I'm pushing out that top row. That second, actually, I guess secondly is a third. Let me get a little one that's a little more soft. That's the same brand. Equally as annoying. Okay, this one feels good. Okay, so I'm pushing it out to give it that more of a gumdrop shape. Going in between the spokes. Just be gentle with it. Don't, you know, don't push so hard that, like, what I did, I think whenever I made the last one, I just popped it right through. So you got to feel that tension, right? And you can, it might go too far, so you push ones back down. This one, like the middle bead kind of sunk in, which I don't hate. I'm okay with that. Um, you can kind of keep track of that as you go. I, that happens once in a while. It didn't happen on the original one I did. But that, like I said, it's kind of a cool effect in its own way. So if that happens, don't get, oh, it's cool. Just take it as it is. This one, for some reason, really got sunk in there. And I don't know if I've ever had that happen. But I don't mind it. It kind of makes a cool effect. So we're all about the happy accidents here. That's my way of going about making beaded flowers. Happy accidents. Okay, so there's our beehive. Now, this is probably the one we're going to end up using for assembly. So we'll get to see it in action. So I'm pushing it up, making things rounded. Don't go overboard with the shaping like I am. Um, but, you know, especially... <laughs> I just popped it off there, especially on the sides because they're not really good. no one's really going to see the sides with the fringe, which is our next stop. So I'm pushing it up against my thumb, so you can't really see me pushing it. So once you get it kind of even shaped, however close enough to how you want it for now, and you got your spoke wires bended, bent, 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 bent. Why do I keep saying bended? Bent in. Then you can kind of do like a little loose twist with them. It doesn't really matter. You're gonna, and it's kind of hard for me to twist that many wires, but you're gonna um. You're going to wire it down to your stem wire anyway. So that's good. You know, anything. So it ends up kind of looking like that in the profile. These things are pretty sturdy. This one is looking less, but I kind of like that trapezoidy top. So I'm going to leave it. See how it's a little less rounded there, but I kind of dig it. So, you know, happy accidents. I kind of like that one. It's kind of buttony. Okay. So that there is our um let's put these away that is our basket weave center so we've done well with that one get rid of those until i remember where i put the bottle um oh right here so next thing we want to do is i love these little um silicon bowls i got again on amazon because you can make your own funnel out of them look at that so if you put beads to the side for a second and I use them for mixing my paints and everything. But these things are cool. I think I talked about them in another video. And they come in all these kind of fun colors. And you can get like 12 of them for like 8 bucks or something. And you can make your own little funnels. And super handy. I use them every day. Um, okay. So. Now we're going to talk about the fringe. Fringe is another place where you can kind of have your own sort of expression. And way you want to deal with it. Because... And you notice here, I'm actually using three different colors for my end beads and different wire too, for that matter. So I'm using a darker smoky topaz, a lighter, actually, I think this inside bead is actually the one we just used, the opaque brown, and then a smoky topaz, a B, and then a beige frosted color lined. Um, you can use all the same. That's fine. I've done that multiple times or just two, whatever. Um, there's three different lengths in general. Uh, so that you kind of get this kind of puff factor to it. And, you know, this is the one where you get the callus from it. And let's be honest, ain't no fun. So, because when I'm only doing a little bit of beads, I love using my handy dandy Ritter spinner, which I was turned on to by my beading buddy, Suzanne. I'm sure some of you know, who has given me many good ideas since I've known her. So, um, this is just one of many. And anyhow, so let me figure out what we're going to... Let's kind of... Let's just redo that one. So I'll start with my beige. 
Maybe we won't start with my beige because maybe I don't know where I put it. That's funny. Okay, let's start with the inner one. Actually, but if we're going to use that one, hmm, maybe I will use a black bead. Because if I'm going to use this, see, this is what we're thinking of as you go. If I'm going to use this guy, see, this one had the frosted jet inside. But if I'm going to use this one, then I might actually want to use the Picasso. I mean, this, this one has the um, brown one, so I might want to use a different color. So I'm going to use the, and I already have this one twisted on a 26. I don't want it on a 26. So I'm going to put... I'm going to use the frosted hybrid jet for the inner one, uh, the one closest to it. And I'm going to do that. I do my wraps on a 28. Um, where is my 28 gauge iron? That's the question. So bear with me for a second because if I turn off the thing, it's going to make it more annoying to put back. Let me see. I thought I just saw my 28. Yeah, this one works. So, 28 gauge iron. Um, and sometimes I like it to have actually a little more um, contrast. So, I'll do like a white bead with a black wire or whatever. For this inner one, I'm going to kind of keep them similar. Because I want to seem like it's growing off of the pistol in a way. So, I do for the inner one, I'm going to do... Um, let's go back to my counts. So... This is going to be for the stamens, so for the fringy looking thing. So normally I start with the outer one, but I don't know where I put my beige beads, which I have a ton of, so that's kind of hilarious that those would be the ones that I can't find right now. Um, but anyhow, back to the matter at hand. Uh, so we're going to start with the inner one, and um, I do 16 of those. Really? This is perplexing. Let me look in here real fast. Bear with me, everyone. Oh, there it is. Actually, so let's, well, we already got those loaded up. So these are going to be my outer beads. Um, so I don't know why I do the outer ones because they're bigger and then I'm happy that they're done, maybe. Probably, right? I'm like, yay, no more. So inner, I did approximately 12. I, I think I booted that up to 16, actually. So I'm going to change that if I can find my pencil, which I can't. Um, so I'll write it in erasable pen for now. But that melts, by the way, if you use a erasable pen, be careful. So I'm going to do 16. Always a work in progress, these patterns or designs or whatever you want to call them. And so I'm going to do a half inch on those. So that means a half inch. So I, I when I write it, I kind of do like a, like, just to keep a visual of it. So I'm going to grade up. This is going to be the very inner one. So it's going to be a half inch twisted wire. And there's going to be 12 of them, right? So you don't need to watch me do all 12 for gosh sakes. But we'll just start with a couple. And then I'll just not even do the rest and we'll just come back and have them all done. Okay, so what I normally do is I load and I'm picky, right? I'm like, oh, that one's a skinny one. That's not going to look pretty on top of fringe. Throw it away. So I'm going to load exactly the number I need so that way I don't have to keep count onto my twisting wire. So that's seven. And I take out skinny ones that happen. Seven. These are. This is a really good bead, though. It's very uniform. 7, 10, and 16. Exactly. Now I know that that's how many I need. And I'm going to put a little springy clasp down here so that they don't get sucked down into the depths and I of my wire spool and I never see them again. Now, okay, so everyone knows how to do these. I'm just, you know, showing you how I start these. So I get my one bead. And I have my 16 on here. And I don't know, four inches, whatever. Just give yourself enough room. I like to have a lot of wraparound wire on it. So I might even go longer. Push it up. Now here's my pickiness. Are you ready? Uh, my pickiness comes in that I want it real tight on the bottom of the bead. So the bead doesn't wobble. And you're just straight up always seeing. You're always seeing the top of the bead. You're not, it's not flopping sideways. You're not, you notice in this that, not to be a weirdo or anything, but you notice here you never see like the bead hole. I don't know, that one kind of flipped, but that's because of the wire, not because of the bead, because of the wrap. There we go, fixed it. That you're always looking down on a bead. You're always seeing like a color of a bead. You're not seeing the bead hole. It's not flopping sideways. You're getting the full effect of the color. Because where we're relying, think about it that way, 
we're relying on one bead to really kind of wow people when they look down at it. You know, and so if it's flopping sideways and they're just seeing a gaping hole, then it's not doing its job. Or I'm not letting it do its job, however you want to think about it. So, back to the matter at hand. Get your lead wire. Bend it. <laughs> Bend it. Get your little crease on here. And then, for me, because my hands cannot start it, there's no way on this planet. I just couldn't do it. I use my hair and I crimp them, crimp them. So see how now it's all crimped there. And then I like to spin them away from me, which means that I take the back wire and I put it over the top instead of underneath. And then now here's how I make sure I get that tight, 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 like right up at the bottom of the bead spin as I hold this crossover, right at the crossover with my nail and my finger and I twist away. Now see, it's still flopping. Definitely do not want that to happen. And I keep twisting. Now, you don't want to hold too tight on the bead. You don't want to crack it. But it is hard to do. Again, get vinyl nose pliers if you don't have them. You can find these or only... I bought more expensive ones later on that were like hydraulics. They always... Uh, whatever. These are $6 ones and they're perfect. Okay, so you can grab the bead anywhere. You can grab on the sides anywhere. Just be gentle. And now I'm pinching. See, hard? See how hard I'm pinching here? Pinching hard. Um to make sure that the wrap goes up, not down. That's preventing the wrap. Because otherwise it might torque it down that way and it wouldn't put that tight wrap. That's still not tight enough for me. Look at that. I'm still going, mm, I don't know. It's pretty close though. So that's how I, I tell as I look down and I see that the wire, I know this is probably super impossible to see. I wish, but basically I'm looking for the wire to be going straight on the bottom so there's no wiggle on this bead at all. Okay, no wiggle. And then after that, now I finish out my, once I've got that done, now I can either do it by fingers, depending on the wire, and twist down about a half an inch. It doesn't need to be super tight twist on the bottom. However, if it's not tight, the easier it is when you wrap it around your stem wire for it to unravel. So it's there's a there's a giveaway on that. So this is just about ha exactly half an inch. Now, sometimes if it's a little bit less than, or needs to go a little less, I'll pull the bottom and that actually will tighten the thing. <laughs> Might be good if I measure it that way. And we see that it's basically, it's, it's a little bit over and that little bit counts, but I'm going to let it go on this one. Now, after that, there we go. See, I just pulled it apart a little bit. The reason why is because these beat these, Stock sizes are so close already. There we go. That is exactly half an inch. That's exactly what we're looking for. Going from the bottom wire when it's super straight, right through the middle hole. Right through the hole. I guess middle hole, there's only one. So right through the middle of the hole. Okay. So now after that, what I do, um, and I'm sure many of you do this too, is I go, I use the initial one. That's now my guide. I don't need to measure every one. That's my guide. That's what I want. So I'm going to just go about... I don't know, three-eighths of an inch, almost a quarter of an inch past it. Right right about there. And then I make my fold again. Fold it. So I know where the bead's supposed to be. Sometimes you'll get close depending on whether... I mean, you can wiggle like a millimeter and it will completely... It's easier for me to do it if it's over here. What's going on? I was going to say, that's weird. <laughs> Two-headed wire. No. Okay. So that's the basic idea, right? So now I'm just going to show you a couple because just to show you like, so now we do this kind of fast. You can do the, you can use the pliers to twist it down all the way. Um, it's fine, you know, but again, see how I'm pinching really hard. You can see the white air pushing on there because I'm not wanting the twist to go under it. I'm wanting the twist to be forced to go up towards the bead. Okay, right now it's tight enough. So you can keep going if you want to, or you can step off and, you know, do a little bit of hand rolling. This is where you get that, you can already see the little hole right there, um, where you might get a callus on it. And so just stop and check every so often. So that's about the length I want it to be. And it's a little further away than I might want it to be, but who cares? You're going to wrap it anyway. It does not matter. It's more important that the length of the stalk is correct, not about how far apart these are, because you're wrapping it around. It doesn't matter. You can move them around. Like, these are these are irregularly spaced like that. And can you tell? 
No, it does not even remotely matter. What would make a difference is, you know, and it doesn't have to be that uptightly close, but so you're trying to get everything to be the same as the first one. And you're going to do 16 of these, but you don't need to really count because you've already counted your beads. So again, you fold one up and then go a little bit past it, like just, you know, three eighths of an inch, a quarter of an inch past it. Um, fold it right where it should be. And sometimes you'll get ones that are super close and then do a little initial pinch so that you see that. And then over top with the back wire. That's how I, easier for me to do it. And then I start twisting because I'm twisting away. So I'm twisting away. And I'm pinching. I'm not going to do too many of these because I think you get the gist. So I will join you back when I have them done. And then we can even start the assembly because I'm going to assemble the flower before I have the calyx and the leaves just because I do like a pre-assembly. Anyway. Okay, so that's really tight on there so there's no wiggle and jiggle on those beads. And then sometimes you can do like a lighter grip on it a lighter grip and then um but this this iron wire is this one's kind of tough and if it is hard for you to just do it all the way see now this one i had to do it spin it almost down to the base of the other one it's a little bit too long i can pull it gently don't pull too hard because you might pull the other one apart so it looks good enough i mean they can be off a little bit so don't worry about that but that one i wanted to separate it a little bit anyway so see how they're irregular that will not eat the not even remotely matter um you don't want them to be like half an inch apart because then you're gonna have too much wire wrap around but actually that wouldn't change much to be honest so push up about that amount one more now i will finish this one later because the first thing that i want to show you too are like your wire choices so again i'm i'm going tight with this it's gonna be a little bit floppy until i get it settled in Okay, so we did a few twists there. Get about that far down. And again, just kind of holding this kind of lightly now because I want the wire to twist on itself. And I just realized I went way too far. Look at that. Way too far. So pull it slightly. Or you can just literally un unwrap it. You can unravel it. And just pull it a little bit because, again, you don't want to pull the other the one next to it out. And now look. Fine. It's fine. Okay, so you're going to keep going with those. Now, let me point out to... Where did you go? There you are. So, like I was saying, the wire is part of the character of these. You know, it gives... It actually matters. So, if I were doing, like, an outer one, I might want more of a contrast. And I was going to do... So, with the outer one, I was going to do... Oh my God, are you kidding me? I literally just brought it up, didn't I? And then I was like, I found it. And now I'm like, where is it? Um, <laughs> that's hilarious. Welcome to my world of beading. Oh, there you go. Okay, so. This one, one of my favorite beads. I use it for rosemary, which I put with my lavender um, a lot. Uh, so if I'm doing a, a matte rosemary lavender bouquet, I use this one. It's Toho Beige Lined Crystal Frosted 369F. I actually have this one in like bulk. I don't, this is probably an old one I got before I liked it a lot. Um, so with this one, as we can see here, this is the last one I'm going to show you until I show you the finished product. You don't have to watch me do them all. Um, I'm using a darker wire with this because I like the contrast of the dark with the um, lighter bead. And I like it kind of floating there. So I'm going to do a six. So that's my outer one. So I'm going to do 16 of those. And still using a 28 gauge. And I guess we'll use this one. Antique brass. Um, artistic wire. So we'll use that one. What the heck. So again, we're going to count out 26 on these. As soon as I get this thing undone. Got too fancy with my own self here. Trying to get it through that hole. There we go. Okay, so you can count out 16. And this got really tangled. Dang, there we go. Okay, so you can count out 16 for these. And this, since we're doing the outer one, um, we're doing, and then I will do the other one on my own. 
So these are really uniform, these bees. Toho's are pretty good with that, right? <laughs> exactly 16. Cool beans. I like to challenge myself to get the exact numbers. Okay, so we're doing 16 at three quarters of a, that's the stalk length. And then 30, the middle, and you can break this up if you want more colors. You can combine these all into one color, but you should do the different sizes. So 30 at 5 eighths and then 16 at one half. So it goes 4 eighths, 5 eighths, 6 eighths, basically. I'm adding an eighth of an inch. You know, that seems so small and minor. Yeah, but that keeps the gradation so that when you actually put them all together, um, they kind of make a nice kind of shape dome to them. Otherwise, it would decrease in a different way, be a lot shorter all the way down. A lot steeper and the little the outside ones wouldn't come out as much in fact you can make the outside ones slightly longer if you want to so my only comment with this is just um i was just going to show you like choose you know choose your wire have fun with it you know i'm going to do a light bead you could do all this one would be pretty cool though if you did all this bead in it but i just liked the three different color beads so i'm going to stick to that for this particular arrangement but i definitely like a dark center and an all white stamen situation so again, just the first one, just, you know, bend off, do your thing. But um, I think you get the gist now. I do it so that the back one's top, pushing it right in there, so that, and pinching, and then off you go. The first few twists are kind of annoying because the bead wants to flop around a lot. But we're not going to let it. Pinch right up there. This is a much easier one. That, that iron one is a very stiff um, wire. But this is a pretty easy wire to do. So now again, the thing is you can use, you can do a light, not as, um, oh, do your first one. So we're doing three quarters of an inch. So you can do one that's like not as tight of a twist in the bottom. But again, when you're wrapping it around the stem wire, you have to be real gentle with it then, which can be kind of annoying. Okay, so that looks like about three quarters of an inch. Let's see what we got. Okay. <laughs> well, look, it worked out perfectly. It's just fun. I like to make it a little game for myself. So that is, in fact, exactly three quarters of an inch. Um, I do want the bottoms to be straight, though. So, like I said, I'm kind of weird. It's like a game I play with myself along the way is to see if I can measure or count exactly. Okay, so three quarters of an inch by sight kind of thing. So now that's my guide tendril, my guide stalk. After that, every time you're doing them, you just pull up about three-eighths of an inch to a quarter of an inch up because it's not about how long the stalk is it's about um the twisting factor and the uh well kind of i guess it is because you have more twist but it's more about the spacing you want so again I, I do it so that the this wire comes over top so i can hold it like this and then twist it away and we're pinching with the nail and fingers it can be a short fingernail, doesn't matter. You're just kind of pushing it on there and so that we're getting no wiggle on that top bead. And once we got that done, then we can just spin. You can have a lighter grip on it. Try to keep it even, right? Have a lighter grip on it. And then you'll see this kind of be loose. But the thing is, once you get it loose all the way down, uh, you can hold it and make it go tighter and it's actually easier, right? Right? So I want to use this as a guide. And right now it's exactly the same length. It doesn't have to be exact. This is nature, for goodness sake. So that's just a guide. If it goes a little bit up or down, fine. Um, you have that option. Oh, no, the ice cream man's here. I wonder if my... If he's, no, he's not even waking up. <sighs> he's getting older. Okay, so that's how we're going to do these. I'm going to turn it off now. And then I will join you back when my fringes are completely done. So what we're doing, by the way, just to remind you, is 16, three quarter, we're doing 16, three quarter inch stalks, 30, five eighth, five eighth, five eighth inch stalks, and 16, one half inch stalks. You can do them all the same color. You can grade them lighter to darker, darker to lighter. Do your thing. Have fun with it. Contrasting wire sometimes, not contrasting wire the other, however you want to do it. Um, I, I will say one of my favorites was, uh, like a black wire with a, a pretty close to white bead. I don't ever use, hardly ever use straight white beads, but, um, so, you know, do your thing. It's, it can be a lot of fun. 
go for the contrast, play it up. You know, poppies, fun. Okay, so I'll join you back. For you, it's going to be a nanosecond because it's just going to stick on the end here. For me, it's going to be some long time of callus-inducing twisting. I can already feel it coming back. Either that or I'm just losing feeling in this fingertip. Or both. I suspect it might be both. Um, yeah, if that happens, don't worry. It will come back. It will come back. But after rolling so many of these, huh, um, you definitely can lose some feeling in there. So anyhow, um, okay, I'm going to pause this. And I'll be back with the finished fringes and the pre-assembly mode. 